What are you waiting for? You gotta send me a tutorial. People are waiting. Ah. Uh, okay. Hey guys, ever felt too lazy to get off the couch and do your work and blamed it on the floor being on lava? Yeah, me neither. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn your floor into lava. For that, we're going to take a handheld shot and track it using the 3D camera tracker. We will then create an animated lava texture, place it in the 3D space of our scene and add some glow to it to really make it stand out. Finally, we will add some bursts of molten lava using some of the water splash elements from Action VFX. The guys over at Action VFX were actually cool enough to allow me to give away one of the water splash elements for free and you will find a download link to that file as well as everything else that you need to follow along with this tutorial down in the description of the video so do make sure to check that out. Also be sure to check out the week-long 50% off Black Friday sale that the guys at Action VFX are currently running. It's a great opportunity to pick up some super high quality action stock footage. Now, I know I am super lucky in that I do get all of my elements for free because I actually work with these guys, but even if I had to buy my elements, quite frankly, I'd probably go with Action VFX. I probably just wouldn't get all of them. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to be using Adobe After Effects and this is going to be an intermediate tutorial. What this means is that I will move fairly quickly through all of the basic things because I will simply assume that you know them already. If you are getting lost along the way, do make sure to check out my Adobe After Effects for absolute beginner tutorial series, which again, I'm going to link down below. But now, before your marshmallows turn to coal, let's jump right into it. The tutorial, not the lava. In Adobe After Effects, let's first import our footage. Let's create a new composition by dragging the lava floor.mp4 onto the new composition icon. This is just a short clip from the intro of this tutorial. It's a handheld shot, so I first want to stabilize it a little bit. For that, let's apply a warp stabilizer effect to the lava floor layer. Once the effect has analyzed and stabilized your footage, you have a really nice and smooth shot. However, I want to retain a little bit more of that handheld feeling, so I'm actually going to come back into the effect settings for the warp stabilizer effect and drop the smoothness down to around about 5%. Once that has restabilized, our footage is still nice and smooth, but it just feels a little bit more natural. Next, select your lava floor layer and pre-compose it by pressing Ctrl, Shift and C. I'm going to call this composition Lava Floor Stabilized and do make sure that you move all attributes into the new composition. Next, we need to track the footage, so apply a 3D camera tracker to the new comp layer. Once that's done, I recommend popping open the advanced tab in the 3D camera tracker and having a look at your average error. If this is above a pixel, I recommend tweaking a few of the settings to get a more accurate track. The first thing I'm going to do is enable detailed analysis. This is going to reanalyze the footage, but it's going to include more features, more detail during this analysis phase. Cool! Our average error has dropped to 0.9 of a pixel and I think that's probably good enough. With your lava floor stabilized layer selected and the 3D camera tracker selected, you should see a whole bunch of track points on your footage. If these are a little bit too small, you can simply come up and increase the track point size so you can see them a little bit more clearly. And now let's try to define a ground plane where we're going to place all of the lava. I'm going to select a track point down here on the bottom of the left leg of the couch. Hold down your shift key and let's select the one on the kitchen floor and maybe select this one down here in the corner. Make sure you don't select one that's actually on me because I'm a moving object. And hmm, the target doesn't seem quite aligned with the surface of the floor. One of the weird things that I've encountered with the 3D camera track in Adobe After Effects is that if under your advanced your solve method is set to auto detect, this usually does not do a good job. So I'm going to change this from auto detect down to typical because I know this is a standard handheld shot. This will resolve the camera and what do you know? Our average error has actually dropped to 0.81 of a pixel. The track points have gotten a little bit small again so let's increase the track point size again. And let's select the same three track points. Bottom left corner of the couch, hold down shift, let's select the one on the kitchen floor and the one over on the right hand side. And that looks a whole lot better. So let's right click one of the track points and select to create solid and camera. Next, select your track solid and press Ctrl Shift Y to bring up the solid settings. In here, I really want to increase the width and the height of my composition because this is the resolution of my lava floor. If this is too low, your lava floor is going to end up pixelated. So maybe let's increase this to 3000 by 3000. 
Then rotate the plane to align it with the edge of the kitchen. Then scale up your layer and I recommend you hold down shift to scale it up uniformly and position it so it covers the entire area of the floor. Scrub through your composition to make sure this layer covers the floor for the entire shot and I think that actually looks pretty good. Next, make sure your track solid is selected and let's pre-compose it. Let's call this one Lava Floor Comp. And for this one, I want to leave all of the attributes in the current composition. Double click onto the Lava Floor Comp to jump into this composition. And this is where we can now create the Lava Floor Texture. For this, search for and apply a turbulent noise effect to the track solid. We're going to tweak this in a moment. For now, let's also apply a Colorama effect to the same layer. This is going to look a little bit wacky. In the settings for the Colorama effect, expand the input phase and make sure that your get phase from is set to intensity, which is the brightness output of the turbulent noise effect. Open up the output cycle and under use preset palette, change this over to fire. This is going to give you a little bit of a fiery look, but it's way too bright. So now we can come back into the turbulent noise effect and you can now bring down the brightness and jack up the contrast to create this really high contrast lava -y look. Because right now our texture is entirely static, let's alt click onto the stopwatch icon next to the evolution property in the turbulent noise effect and add a little expression. In the expression editor, I'm simply going to type time star 100. And if you now scrub through, you've got this really cool undulating lava texture. Obviously, customize this to their liking. One thing I like to add is that dark hardened crust that you usually find on top of lava. Let's call this layer Active Lava, duplicate it by pressing Ctrl and D, and let's rename this one to Lava Crust. With the Lava Crust selected, in the Turbulent Noise effect, expand the Transform, and I'm going to just increase the scale of that a little bit because I want some of the darker patches of this crust to essentially be swimming on top of my Active Lava. I'm also going to make this a fair bit darker. With the Lava Crust layer selected, press U twice to reveal all of our expressions. And I'm going to change the expression for the evolution a little bit. I'm going to change this to time star 20. I just want the crust to change a little bit slower than all of the lava that's flowing underneath it. And then apply an extract effect to the Lava Crust. Let me solo this layer for just a second. In the settings for the extract effect, bring down the bright part. So we're going to key away all of the bright areas. So we're only left with this dark crust. And I want to drag the bottom one out a little bit to feather out this dark crust just a little bit. So now all we really have is these dark patches that are evolving very, very slowly in comparison to our active lava. Let's unsolo the lava crust layer. And now we have this active lava bubbling up underneath a hard crust. Let's jump back to our main composition and we now have a lava floor tracked into our shot. However, right now the lava floor is overlapping absolutely everything, so let's fix that up next. Reselect the stabilized footage comp and the 3D camera tracker and let's place a solid right over this wall here. For that, select three of the track points, right click on any of them and select to create a solid. Select this new solid and bring up its settings by pressing Ctrl, Shift and Y. And again, I'm going to jack the width and the height up to probably about 3000 by 3000. Rotate and scale it as needed so it covers up the area where the lava connects with the edge of the kitchen. Lower its opacity to some around 10 to 20% and let's temporarily disable the visibility on the lava floor comp. Then use the pen tool and draw along the edge of the kitchen where the lava floor should not be visible. You may want to scrub through your composition and fix up things like the leg of this fan poking out here on the bottom right hand side. Once that's done, add a little bit of feathering to this mask so the edges aren't quite as harsh. Then bring the opacity back to 100%, collapse and hide this layer. Let's repeat the process for the couch. Reselect the stabilized footage comp and the 3D camera tracker and this time I'm going to define a solid using the track points on the legs of the couch. Because the couch isn't flat, creating a mat for it is likely not going to be perfect. But for this simple effect, it's likely more than sufficient. And if you're really picky, you can always go back and animate the mask that we're going to add onto it. Let's create a new solid layer. Again, let's make sure we increase its width and height to maybe 3000 by 3000. And then move, rotate and scale it as needed so it covers the entirety of the couch. Lower its opacity, grab the pen tool and draw a mask around the outline of the couch. Again, I'm going to add a little bit of feathering to this mask, then bring the opacity back to 100% and maybe I'll actually rename my two solids Couch Matte and Kitchen Matte. That looks pretty good. 
Let's hide its visibility and repeat the process one more time for this little TV shelf here. I'm not going to re-explain this, we've done this twice before. Simply create a mat for your shelf. Re-enable the visibility on all of your mats and if you scrub through now, you have a really colorful setup of everything that's going to obscure the lava floor. Make sure that you enable motion blur for all of these matte layers and I'm actually also going to enable it for the lava floor as well as for the overall composition. And now select all of your matte layers and pre-compose them. I'm going to call this one Lava Floor Matte Comp. They are going to appear totally misaligned and in order to fix that, on your Lava Floor Mats layer, you enable this little star here which is Collapse Transformations. So all of the layers in this composition are going to be treated as if they were part of this one. Next, let's re-enable the visibility on the Lava Floor Comp. And with the Lava Floor Comp sitting directly under your Lava Floor Matte Comp, switch the track mat of this layer from None over to Alpha Inverted. This is going to cut all of these track mats out of your lava floor and it now looks like the lava floor is sitting underneath your furniture. Next, let's add some glow and some intensity to this lava. Because we have a track mat on this lava floor comp layer, we first need to pre-compose this layer as well as the lava floor mat comp directly above it. So select both layers and pre-compose them. I'm going to call this one Lava Floor Final Comp and again because it does depend on the 3D camera in our current composition, make sure you enable the Collapse Transformation switch on this layer so everything should be back to where it was. And now simply apply a glow effect to this layer. Make sure that in your project you're set up to use 32 bits per channel otherwise your glow may look rather ugly. And then in the effect settings for the glow effect, tweak the threshold, the radius and the intensity to give your floor some real heat. That looks pretty cool. Finally, let's spice up our effect by adding some lava bursts. For that, we are going to be using the water splash elements from the Action VFX collection. Return to your project panel and import the small water hit 720p. Drag this clip onto the new composition icon. This is a small sample video that the guys at Action VFX allowed me to render out for you and include as part of this tutorial. It's just a really cool looking small water hit effect and it's rendered on a transparent background. The clip itself, like most of the elements from Action VFX, has been shot in slow motion, so it's at 60 frames per second. And since lava is usually a little bit more sluggish than water, let's slow this clip down. Bring up the composition settings and change the frame rate over to 24 frames per second. Also, triple the duration of your composition to maybe about 15 seconds. Then, right click your small waterhead layer, come up into time, and enable time stretch. In here, change the stretch factor to 250, which gets you from 60 frames per second to round about 24. And if you play back the composition now, your water hit should now play back in slow motion. Still not very lava though. So let's apply a colorama effect to this layer. In the effect settings, open up the input phase and change the get phase from to alpha. Open up the output cycle and as we did with the lava floor, change use preset palette to fire. Now our water hit is starting to look like a lava burst. Next, apply a CC blobalize effect to the layer. Expand the blobbiness settings and change the property from lightness over to alpha. Then lower the softness to round about 6, which should be enough to glue some of those loose water drops together. Now the water splash effect is starting to look a whole lot more like a burst of lava. Finally, the last thing I want to fix up is that right now this water splash has a bit of a reflection and lava doesn't usually give you a reflection. Also, a bit further on, there's a whole lot of ripples going on. I want to get rid of those ones as well. So let's create a new solid layer. Let's call this one Lava Mat. Disable the visibility, but with the layer still selected, grab the pen tool and draw a mask around the bottom half of this lava effect. I'm coming up on the edges a little bit because I want to get rid of those little ripples on the sides as well. Then bring up the mask settings and add a little bit of a feather. And finally, on the small waterhead layer, change the track mat option from none over to alpha inverted. This is going to remove the reflection and most of the water splashes of the drops raining down. Maybe I'll bring the mask up a little bit more on the sides. There you go. This now looks a whole lot more like a lava burst. Lastly, if you enable the transparency grid, you'll see that our lava burst has a little bit of a dark outline. That comes from the black color in the colorama effect. And you can actually click on this tab and then bring down the opacity to fade out that black and get rid of this dark outline. This will prevent a dark shadow from appearing once we add a glow effect to this lava burst. 
Back in our main composition, we select the layer that you tracked and the 3D camera tracker to see all of the track points. And let's create another solid right on the ground. Rotate that solid so it is nicely aligned with the surface of your lava floor. And now I'm actually going to duplicate this solid and this copy I'm going to rotate to stand it upright. I can now push it up and this other solid tells me where the surface itself is. So I want to make sure that I'm standing this solid right onto the surface. So it's standing directly on the floor plane where my lava is. Then make sure that the upright standing tracking solid is selected. Come into your project panel and drag the small water hit comp that we've prepared and turned into lava onto it while holding down the Alt key. This is going to replace its contents with our lava burst. You may have to tweak the timing on your timeline and I can see that my effect is actually lying on the side. So let's rotate it around, scale it up and reposition it so that this lava burst is coming right out of our ground. I'm also going to rotate this layer so it's facing the camera a little bit more straight on. Also, because I do intend to duplicate this effect and move it around and rescale it as needed, I'm going to grab the pen behind tool and move the anchor point to the place where that lava burst is emerging. This way all transformations happen around the origin point of this lava burst and it's going to make it a whole lot easier going forward. Let's rewind a little bit and check this out. You now have a lava burst coming out of your floor. We can now delete the solid for the ground plane. Do make sure you enable motion blur on this lava burst and let's apply a glow effect to it. Again, feel free to tweak this effect in any way that you want. Finally, duplicate this effect as often as you want and place it all around the lava floor. Scale it up or down in any way you need. Just make sure you don't move it up or down, otherwise those effects might start floating above the ground. Vary the timing of when these effects appear. You may also want to add some cool ground fire elements to set the edge of your kitchen or the couch on fire using the exact same technique I've just shown you. Once you've done with all of that, you should have a pretty cool looking lava floor effect. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you would like to help me out, please hit that like button, share the video around, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. If you do have any comments, questions, or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I will see you later.